Hello everyone, welcome to, uh, let's, I don't know what we're gonna call this, but for now, let's just call it, uh, Let's Play Mansions of Madness. Yay. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm Riley. And, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna play some, uh, some mansions. We're probably gonna make a regular thing out of it. We're probably gonna try to do more than one, because why not? There are more than one scenario that, uh, uh, come with Mansions of Madness. But we're gonna start with the first one. The very first one coming right out of the gate. What, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Consider. Cycle of Eternity. Thank you, yes. We're playing Cycle of Eternity. Um, so we're going to uh, first choose our characters. Um, and again, uh, I, I don't remember if I said this or not because I said it like 15 seconds ago and my short-term memory is really terrible. But we are using all of the components of the expansion pack. Uh, all, of, all of the expansions. We have all of the expansions, including the most recent one, Sanctum of Twilight. Uh, you can actually see uh, me and, and my wife here and my brother and we're just goofing around, hanging out, and uh, unboxing Sanctum of Twilight. I'll post a link to that in the description below if you're interested in looking at it. But, uh, yeah, so for now we're going to choose our characters. Who are you thinking? Uh, I was thinking William Yorick. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, 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 a pretty, uh, he's a pretty solid character. Oh, glare. Dear, dear goodness, that is quite a glare. We put hard <laughs> sleeves on them. Uh, yeah. Them and yeah. Okay, uh, oh. so, so William, William Yorick. Um, I was thinking about being Ashcan Pete. Uh, cause, if I recall correctly, influence isn't a huge factor no, in really. this scenario. However, so, I feel like every time you be Yorick, we always fail at choosing somebody that's, uh, smart. Like, that has a lot of lore. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. I, I definitely want to do somebody that's lore-heavy. You know what, I do kind of remember liking Glory of Goldberg, though. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna be Gloria Goldberg. She's the uh, the author, I believe. Yes, the author. So, um, oh, let's see. You do avoid getting that glare on screen there. Anyway, so uh, yeah, she's got uh, some good stats. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go ahead and set up this board, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. So uh, Riley is going to be our humble narrator uh, here today. So uh, yeah, let's do it. Um, and then our characters were Gloria Goldberg and William Yorick. Investigators, biz blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Investigators begin the scenario with the following. Bandages. Candles. Bandages. Candles. Fire extinguisher. Ooh! Yay! Uh, that's all you, that item. Tote bag. And then the spell, Feed the Mind. I'll take that. Yeah, because you lore. Yeah. I'll take that there fire extinguisher. Yeah, you take that fire extinguisher. Alright, so. Feed is in mind. Okay. Um, we have the same health. Yeah, health and sanity. Okay, cool. So, do we care at all who gets the bandages? Yeah, I don't think it's really going to matter. I kind of feel like, honestly, you should probably take it because I feel like you're going to be doing more of the combat. That's true. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then the tote bag effects cannot cause you to drop items unless you choose to. That's handy. Which do you think? Whoever gets the tote bag should get the candles, and then that way we can't drop them and start a fire. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, <laughs> candles are for casting spells, right? Uh, yeah, you can discard this card okay. to convert all magnifying glasses to success as well. Tell, tell stuff. you what, I'll take that because you don't really like having light sources anyway, right? No, they're the <laughs> devil. <laughs> Legitimately the devil. What, you afraid of starting a fire or something? Oh my god. Uh, and I'll take Feed the Mind. Yeah. So I've got uh, one of those there. Okay. Uh, and then we each begin with two clues. Clue tokens. Two clues for you. Oh, sorry. And two clues for me. Okay, cool. All right, well, we have all of our starting items, so let's continue setup. Uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, the uh, thing that I'm using to record the app uh, can only record sound externally, which means it will record sound through the microphone that I have on that phone, but it won't record sound coming from the device itself, which means it's not going to record the sound uh, or the music or anything like that. Sorry about you guys. Which means that this um, little uh, uh, flavor text at the beginning of the scenario, uh, Riley, we will have you read it. Okie doke. 
Um, there's usually a nifty little quote before the start of everything, and this time it is, That is not dead, which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die. Great thing. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Begin scenario. Alrighty. You slump into your office chair after another long day of interviews. You have been investigating the disappearances surrounding a wealthy neighborhood for two weeks. But you have nothing to show for it. The telephone rings. You answer and hear the panicked voice of an older man. Is this the investigator who visited the Vanderbilt estate? You flip through the files on your desk. William Vanderbilt, a wealthy bachelor, mother recently deceased. He had refused to meet with you, but you were able to speak to several members of his serving staff. This is Eugene, Mr. Vanderbilt's butler. I do not know who else to call. The police think I am crazy. Unnatural things have, been, have started happening here. I am worried for my master. I think he is in danger. Please help. Finally, a lead. You hang up the phone, throw on your coat, and leave for the Vanderbilt estate. All right. Swag. Well, let's do it. Uh, your car rattles up the uneven drive, pulling to a stop in front of the estate. Several cars and carriages are parked along the drive. However, the butler who contacted you is nowhere to be seen. You knock on the garage, the large oak door, with, to no response. Fearing something has happened, you try the handle, and the door swings open into a lavish entryway. Um, and then there should also be a wall up here. Okay. Or... Here. Okay. This is going to be hella backwards and disorienting. Uh, another one there, too. Okay. Alrighty. You step into the warmth of the house. A strange stillness hangs in the air, and your footsteps echo through the quiet entrance. And our investigators start up here. In the middle of the lobby sits a table with a small pile of papers. A table with a telephone sits at the top of the staircase on the right. A mysterious painting of a nighttime landscape looms over the lobby staircase. The silence is broken by the muffled shouts and sounds of crashing pots and pans coming from the door to your right. You notice a shelf stacked with books and other objects nearby. Pushing it in front of the door could prevent someone or something from coming through. Yeah, barricades are a thing. Yeah, they're a thing. Um, we don't really use them very often. Uh, there is one scenario that they do come in handy, but... Yeah. yeah, we might play that for a future video. You'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> anyway. Three other doors lead into the mansion. Nope. Oh, what's so tiny? All right, the investigator phase has begun. Okay. You want to lead us off? Sure. Okay, well... I'm the tank for this game, so I guess I'm gonna just investigate that door where the weird noises were coming from. Oh, hey, uh, real quick. Point of interest. So, the rules of this game, as I'm sure you are aware, uh, dictate that you only get two actions per turn. However, that's not fun. No. Because you're going to die. Even the easiest scenarios are... I mean, we've played them multiple times, and they're virtually unwinnable. They, uh, yeah. Which I mean, is sort of the spirit of Lovecraft? But at the same time, if you want to just relax and have a fun game, then yeah, yes. it's not for you. So we have a house rule, uh, which allows us to give uh, to have three actions per turn instead of two. It doesn't break the game. Um, it doesn't make it uh, just a completely like it doesn't completely forfeit the challenge. But it is like playing the game on easy mode, and that's what we're uh, doing right now. We're here to just relax and have a good time. This isn't Dark Souls. Go away, y'all <laughs> elitist mother effers. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, so so we're just so we're gonna do our house rule of three actions per turn. Uh, so your first action is exploring that room, correct? Yes. Cool. A ruckus can be heard on the other side of this door. Explore. Oh, uh, the dining room tentacle tile. The door swings open to reveal a dining room and chaos. An aging man in a tailcoat scrambles through a serving window into the kitchen as he tries to escape a strange black creature writhing on the dining room table. Okay. Cool. The creature turns to face you. Its black serpentine body shifts and changes, playing tricks on your eyes as you try to focus on it. The creature unfurls its leathery wings and unleashes a blood-curdling screech. Spawn a haunting horror is indicated. Then suffer two horror, will negates. So, my will is four. Another thing that I did, personally, was uh, I bought uh, an extra set of dice, uh, just to make uh, this whole thing a lot easier. Hey, you're fine. Yeah, I needed to negate two horrors, so mm -hmm. I did. In the center of the dining table, a carving knife sits embedded in a roast. Place the knife common item as indicated. An investigator can pick up an item in his space as part of the trade action. Knife, right there. There are right? a f yeah. Okay. There are a few little like helpful. This is the first scenario tips. <laughs> so like yeah. yeah. Throughout, but they're not in the other scenarios. Thankfully. Right. Really. Um, a china cabinet stands against the wall, though it looks to have been repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks. Okay. You can see a kitchen through the serving window. Most of the cabinets are ajar due to the food preparation, but one has been locked shut with a chain catches your eye. That can only mean good things. Mm -hmm. In the kitchen, you can also see that someone has left the refrigerator open. Water leaks out into a puddle on the floor. That's unsanitary. It is. You spot the old man you saw climbing through the serving window, huddling in the corner behind the oven. Sweat beads off his brow, and his eyes bulge in terror. This is Eugene, the butler. Where are you at, Eugene? On the floor now. Oh dear. Have we lost him under the coffee table? Oh wait, I see him. Yeah. Right there? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, you may move one space into the explored area. Which I suppose I'll do. Very well. Alright, so I moved into the space with the monster, which means I have to attack him. Or I can try to evade him, but I have to do that to do anything else. But I'm the tank, so I'll just smack him with my fire extinguisher. Do it. Attack with a heavy weapon. You bring your weapon down, attempting to crush any monstrous appendage within reach. Uh, strength, which again is four. There you go. Cool. Um, your swing connects and the gruesome noise of the impact makes your stomach turn. The monster <laughs> suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test result. Weapon's damage is two plus two is four. Aw oh, man, he's one away from being dead. <laughs> well, because of our handy dandy little house rule, you got one more action, huh? That's true. Um, yep, yeah, so I'll go ahead and use my final action to just knock him again. Uh, the creature knocks you prone, but you keep your grip on your weapon, and now you have a clear shot of its softer underbelly. Cool. Speaking of soft underbelly... Oh, look at the kitty! Uh oh Oh, nice. Okay. Your weapon slams into the creature's most vulnerable spot. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test result. But we only needed one, so... He's dead! There you go. Um, my special ability is William York, is that whenever a monster is defeated, I gain a clue. <sighs> the creature lurches to the ground, dead. Hearing the monster's final fate, the old man in the kitchen continuously, cautiously steps out. Move Eugene. I'll let you. Cool. Alright, well, 
that is my turn. We will have to speak to Eugene. Okay. Another time. Um, well, actually, I'll speak to Eugene, because I, uh, turns out Gloria has some decent influence here. I'm gonna move one space as one action, uh, and then I'll chat with Eugene. What you got to say, bro? The old man brushes himself off and tries to calm his shaken composure. You came just in time. Thank you so much for saving me. The name is Eugene. We spoke earlier today. I have heard noises from the tower, but the door is locked. I think something bad is going to happen. Are you okay? Where is Mr. Vanderbilt? Or ignore him. Um, let's be polite and ask, are you okay? Because that seemed rather traumatic. <laughs> the butler puts on a weak smile, and the two of you chat for a minute. By the end of the conversation, he seems much calmer. Please take this with you. It has always brought me luck. Gain the Lucky Rabbit's Foot common item. I love that item. Then each investigator in the dining room and kitchen discards one horror. Oh, well, you know. Neither of us has a horror, but, you know, it happens. All right, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. Once per, ra once per round, you may re-roll one die. Nifty. I love that item. It's like Becky! <laughs> Becky is my favorite unique item. <laughs> um, what else does Eugene have to say? Uh, Eugene calmly told you what happened before you arrived. Several roped figures entered the mansion through the side door and took Mr. Vanderbilt to the tower. Soon after they arrived, I could hear them chanting. Where is that? Or ignore him. Where is that? Those ruffians took Mr. Vanderbilt to the tower. You can get to the tower through the north door of the hall, but the door is locked. Mr. Vanderbilt likely keeps the key in his... Wait, I'm not sure if we should, if you would want me trusting you with this influence. In the immortal words of Batman, where is he? Oh my God. Two. All right, Mr. Vanderbilt has a hidden office that he often retreats to. The door is hidden in the estate's library, which is through the west door when you get into the hall. It uses a very strange lock hidden behind a bookshelf. The butler instructs you how to open the secret door to the library. Gain one clue. Neat. Uh, well, that was my turn. You've taken your turn. So now we're on to a mythos phase. Confirm. A sudden sharp crack and a slam sound out, making Gloria Goldberg jump. Oh, come on. Gloria Goldberg suffers one face down horror. Will negate. Well, I suppose worse things have happened. Uh, Will? Correct. I'm good. And we're back to the investigator phase. Okay. What do I do with all the damage? Oh, I'm just going to up here. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, I will let you take your turn first. Okie doke. Pretty sure Eugene doesn't have anything else to say. Nope. Please hurry, Mr. Variable is in danger. I don't care about him. <laughs> um... Rude. <laughs> He's only the guy that asked... Oh, wait, no, I guess Eugene is the guy that asked us to come here. <laughs> We're only doing this for you, Eugene. A china cabinet has been repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks. The cabinet holds candles, wooden statuettes, stones, beads, and other random objects. You try to discern what they could be for. Uh, that's the lore. Oh, that lore's three. You're not completely dumb. <laughs> Just a little dumb. Oh, <laughs> let's see if one will do it. As you dig through the objects, you begin to form a hunch that makes you uneasy. You have heard of objects such as these found at the site of occult rituals. They could prove useful to your investigation. Gain the circumstantial evidence unique item and one clue. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And have a clue. All right. Um, do you want the knife just so you have a weapon? Um, I was actually probably just going to go straight for the hallway. Okay. Uh, I might get my knife on the way out. Uh, and I will check out the fridge. 
The refrigerator has been left cracked open, licking a pool of water onto the floor. You pull open the heavy refrigerator door. Inside, you see a mass of pallid flesh, slick and fragrant with the stink of the ocean. It has the shape of a tube, but surmounted by many writhing tentacles. Oh, its eyes are fixed and dead, staring and seeing too much. You push aside the raw squid and find something useful. Gain the flask common item, then discard the search token. Definitely drink from that flask. Yeah, that's been hiding behind the squid. Yeah, it's a fine. rotting squid. And it's good. Don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Oh, I can improve will. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to have to do that on my next turn, because it's an action. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all my turns. Okay. Well, I'm going to go one... Two, and I'm going to explore um, the northern hall. The door leads deeper into the mansion. Okay. Oh my. The door opens into a dim hallway that winds through the heart of the mansion. Place the hall corner one tentacle and hall end tentacle tiles, and a wall is indicated, and discard all explore tokens leading to the room. Hall corner one and hall end. Correct. The one with the chair goes up here. Is it like that? Uh, yes. Cool. And then a wall goes in this space. Nope. Uh, a wooden desk stands against the wall. Place a search token as indicated. Someone acting in a hurry has knocked over a stack of papers. Three doors lead to other rooms of the mansion. Please explore tokens as indicated. Uh, let's see if we go. Okay. You could use the surrounding furniture to barricade the door should the need arise. Are you even gonna put it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't. I, I can't see the thing from there. You may move one space into the explored area. So I'm right there. So I've used two actions. Correct. And he said the the hallway or like the the library on the northern end, right? That's where the tower is. That's where the tower is. Okay. The but... library is in the through the west door of the hall. So that's probably through here. I believe so. Okay. Um. Well, let's, um, I should have explored this door instead. Oh, well. <laughs> it happens. Uh, let's move right there and call it a day. Okay. So, that's both of our turns again. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you hear voices raised in anger somewhere out of sight. This mythos event affects the investigator with the lowest influence. That would be you. Oh, okay. Mm. Suddenly, something flies at you from the direction of the voices. Place the King James Bible common item in your space, then suffer two damage. The drill of the gates. <laughs> what, did an angry ghost throw a Bible at me? Apparently. Is that what happened? Apparently. Oh no, I just... Nice. Cool. That bark book didn't hurt me. So I'm William York. Okay. Do you want to go first this time? Uh, sure. I'll explore that door if I can. A wood plaque marked library is fastened to the center of the door. Ooh. We were right. Mm -hmm. The door creaks on its hinges as you push it open to reveal the library. Bookshelves line the walls. Discard this explore token and place the library tentacle tile and wall as indicated. 
It's... It's a skinny one, babe. Oh. of research materials that have been recently used sits on a small wooden desk. And a roped figure is pushing a bookshelf back into place. Oh, place snap. a search token is indicated. The roped figure draws out a strange idol and begins chanting. Before your very eyes, a terrifying creature appears out of thin air. The cult member speaks some words to it in a strange language, but the creature turns on him, tearing him to pieces before your eyes. Oh. Spawn a star vampire in the library is oh. indicated. Oh. Then suffer to horror. Oh no. Oh no. Where's he? Is he in the uh, topmost space? Correct. Yeah, he's a... Uh... He ain't nothing. Uh, suffer two horror what? Two horror will negate. Ooh. I'm good. Cool. Having good luck with the roll so far. You may move one space into the explored area. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I do need a weapon now, or a spell, or something. Yeah, I was hoping we were gonna get an offense, an offensive sm uh, spell at the beginning, uh, and alas, we did not. Oh, you know what? If I recall correctly, I might be wrong. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move as my second action. And then we're gonna search that thing. It's a bunch of papers, right? Correct. A stack of papers have been strewn about the floor. Amidst the mundane paperwork, you find a weathered page covered in a strange script. Someone has scrawled a note in English across the top of the page. Speak these words for great power. Recite the script. Return the papers. I, well, I guess I'll recite that script. <laughs> the Eldritch words take on a life of their own as you speak them, reshaping your mind with new understanding of the script you are looking at. The lights flicker and you hear a whisper in your ear. Power comes with a price. Gain the Spectral Razor spell, then discard the search token. Okay. Spectral Razor, that's one of, that's that's one one of them an expansion, yeah? Yeah, I think that's actually from... Uh, the most recent? Yeah, it's, it's actually from Sanctum of Twilight. Uh, so this is one of the newer, uh, newer items. Uh, it's just... Um, Oh shoot, it's uh, a melee only spell. I can't use it with range. Mm. But uh, it looks like it does a base of two damage. Who knows what the uh, side effects are, though? <laughs> that's what we'll call them. We'll call them side effects. The things sure. that happen when you flip it. Alright, so that's my turn. Okay. Oh, that should have gone away. Um, what does the King James Bible do again? Uh, I think it lets you discard a horror? You or another investigator within range may discard one face out of horror. Sure. That's, that's pretty handy. I will pick that up. Good call. For, that's my first action, second action, third action. Someone has locked this cabinet by wrapping a chain around the handles. The chain is sturdy, but the cabinet doors are made of thin wood. You think you could break one of the doors off. Roll two additional dice if you have the crowbar common item. <laughs> I feel like it's, what is it, it's just wood, right? Yeah. I feel like you could bash that in with your fire extinguisher. Exactly, come on. <laughs> it's pretty good. Dose. The flimsy wood cracks as you pull the cabinet door off its hinges. Gain the track shoes common item, then discard the search token. That's another uh, new item. Uh, that's a really handy one, too. Uh, you may move one additional space as part of a move action. Nifty. Yeah, so you can move three spaces when you move. Uh, which is pretty good for you since you're on the opposite side of the house right now. Yeah, and there's this, there's a monster that should probably <laughs> be dealt with. Yeah. Uh, he's probably gonna come after me next turn, though. Um, okay, well that is me. You boost up your turn? Yep. Okay, alright, Mythos! The 
clues you have gathered disprove everything you once knew about the world. This mythos event affects the investigator with the most clues, which is me. Do. Again. You review your notes, attempting to reconcile your new information with the world you remember. Lore. Oh dear. Nice! Okay. Yeah. Uh, you determine that your past ignorance was understandable but dangerous. Okay. Okie doke. The star vampire moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. I was in range of me. Then it attacks each investigator within range. No, that'd be me. Because it is invisible, the beast seems to be everywhere at once. Hmm. Observation, and you need three successes. Ooh. Alright, well, I got a lucky rabbit's foot. But I don't need it! Um, the taunting laughter of the beast helps you locate it, and you... <laughs> you are relieved to at least know that much. <laughs> Brock, stop it. Okay. And then each investigator will need to do a horror check, which is just you. Mm -hmm. The knowledge haunts you that for you to see the star vampire's deadly approach means that another living being recently died to feed the beast's insatiable appetite. Suffer one horror and become dazed. Oh, that's that's the best kind of horror check. The one where you don't get to do nothing about it. <laughs> All right. That's just me. So, I think that that's the end of the uh, mythos, right? Correct. There you go. Do you want to try to kill him? Oh, or should I? I can try. I don't know how successful I'll be. So I'll move into a space, and then I'll attack him with the uh, spectral razor. He has five health, so he's really not that bad. Yeah. Attack with a spell. Mm -hmm. You close your eyes, clench your fists, and recite the blasphemous phrase. Uh, lore, two observations. Or two. <laughs> Six. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Imhotep. Shut up. Imhotep. Uh, You're three. good. All right. A whip of crackling black energy lashes out at the beast. The monster <sighs> suffers damage equal to the test, your test result plus one. Um, I'm going to use a clue. Okay. So... Five cool. damage. He did! Yeah! Uh, then I flip the spell, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Alright, uh, let's see what that does. Alright. So, oh, okay. Uh, spectral Razor. Losing control of the energy, it bursts from your hands in a flurry of quick slices. The blood it draws only strengthens its power to cause pain. You and each investigator in your space suffers one face down damage. Then the monster suffers one additional damage for each investigator in your space. Huh. Well, that would be handy if I hadn't uh, used my clue, but one oh well. One hit killed. Huh? One hit killed. Yeah. Alright, so I got a face down damage. Uh, yeah. and then discard this card and get another Spectral Razor. Uh, that was weird. Okay. Oh shoot. I shouldn't have been able to use the clue because I'm dazed. Well, because your thingamabob ended up killing it anyway. Yeah, I it, mean, it so it's, it's dead, yeah. Okay. Oh dear. Alright. Um, I'm still dazed, yeah, 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 because I still have... Um, These two actions, because you move and then attacked. I'll go there. Okay. And now I'm no longer dazed. Um, honestly, I don't give a shit if so. Oh, look at this. I like how I'm supposed to be the tank character, but I'm just the one, like, moseying around. <laughs> hang on, hang on, I gotta find all this stuff. And I'm like, we have stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> But I gotta get the, the clues. A disheveled pile of paper sits on a table. The papers stacked on the table are invitations marked with today's date. The stars have come round to their positions in the cycle of eternity. 
The Vanderbilt Astronomy Association cordially invites you to a celebratory evening. Gain one clue, then discard the search token. Oh dear, we're in the William York suffers two face down horror observation negates. I feel like you've been taking all the horror checks. I know. That sucks. Well, I mean, it's just been bad luck, I guess, though. Then again, the game knows what our stats are when we choose our characters. I think it's just bad that I keep, like, passing them and nothing bad <laughs> is happening to me. It's like, we're gonna get you. <laughs> um, okay, then he flips two horror face up. But I don't have any horror, so. Well, there you go. Oh dear. And now you will pay the price for that power. The lights flicker and the air crackles with electricity. Suddenly, reality seems to split before you and a terrifying creature slips through from an unknowable space beyond. Spawn Amigo as indicated. Oh, one of those things. He's gonna pop up right here with the table. Oh, I gotta find him. What did I do with him? I got, here we go. Derp. Squeak! Squeak! <coughs> Are you okay? I just choked on my own spit. It's good. Okay. <laughs> the Migo moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Um, you mind taking this since you've got the sure. damage? Okay, sure. cool. Um, in ca yeah, in case that's not clear, whenever uh, monsters like are tied for who they would move toward or attack, it's actually up to the players to decide. Um, so yeah. Uh, then it attacks the investigator within range with the highest strength. Me. The creature flutters on diaphanous wings, then tosses a strange device like a mirror bound with buzzing bronze at your feet. Instantly, a flickering image of yourself appears and grabs you. Strength. Okay. Hmm. Very nice. Dude, we are just tanking all of these rolls. I mean, like, like not tanking, but we're, we're really nailing all these rolls. Sorry, anyway. You hurl your mirror image away, and it flickers out of existence as rapidly as it appeared. Very nice. And then I will do a horror check real quick. The thing's chirping, croaking cry sound almost like language. Please don't. That's awful. Ooh. Um. You got clues, right? Yes. Yeah. I will use one of those. You realize the creature is using your name and words like subject and experiment. Flip two horror face up. I don't have any more. Scrooge. Okay. Do you want to kill that punk? Take him on, beat him up, start a fight, kick some butt, take some names. <laughs> he also only has five health. A heavy weapon. Shouting wordlessly, you raise your weapon above your head and bring it down over and over again. Strength plus one. So I get five. Nice. Okay. Uh, the monster sub is damage equal to your test results. So, three. That ain't nothing. And I will attack him again. You kick the creature back, leaving it scrambling and vulnerable. You raise your weapon and take advantage of the monster's sudden weakness. Strength plus one again. Here you go. There you go. Um, Suffers yeah. damage equal to your test result, which is more than enough to kill him. Nice. So well done, William I York. get a clue. Yes, you do. Oh, did you get a clue for when I killed that one thing? I don't think so. Well, then have two clues. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all my actions. Very well. Um, library shelf. What is that? What do 
Peering behind the bookshelf, the robe figure was moving. You see runic circles inscribed on the wall. Okay. You push aside the shelf to reveal the ritual circles the butler spoke of. You attempt to trace them as he told you. Tap to attempt the puzzle using lore. Oh, cool. One of the little mini games. Okay, I can do these. All right, let's see here. So I've got lore, which means I've got four turns to do this. All right, so let's swap that. Off to a good start. That. I'm so good at these. <laughs> Three moves, yo. Nice. That was actually a really easy one. Most of them were just kind of like, uh, you know, next to the spaces that they needed to be. I just right. needed to swap a few things. Anyway, yeah. You trace a continuous line through the winding markings as the butler instructed you. The runes illuminate with a strange green light, and a wall panel pops open, revealing a secret door to a hidden study behind the wall. Ooh. Gain one clue, then discard this search token and wall. Sweet! Clue. Okay. Looks like we'll have just enough space. Uh, the secret panel on the wall slides open noiselessly and you peer into a hidden office. Place the office tentacle tile and the wall is indicated. Okay. Go like that? Correct. Cool. And the wall here? Correct. Sweet. Really? Oh, I thought you knocked something over, Toby. <laughs> anyway. A bookshelf filled with Frightening objects is mounted on the opposite wall. Place the search token is indicated. And an oak desk sits on the other side of the room. Place the search token is indicated. Okay. You may move one space into the explored area. I shall? Alright, so I've only used one action. Correct. Um, I'm not super worried about the bookshelf, so I'm going to move and search the desk. The oak desk has been kept in good condition. A number of papers and books are neatly stored on the desk's surface. On the desk, you find what looks like a personal planner. As you pick up the book, a brass key clatters from between the pages. You turn to the page it had been holding and find a note scrawled there. If the alignment truly weakens the veil, I believe that it is the only moment we have to break through. I will make the necessary preparations in the tower. Gain the brass key and incriminating evidence unique items. Ooh, incriminating evidence. Okey-doke. You place the planner back onto the desk and search through the drawers. You find some things of use, but Ooh. no additional evidence. Gain the lucky ring common item, then discard the search token. I'm a super lucky person right now. Apparently. Oh, I think the lucky ring. ring is that thing that's like super OP. What is it? The lucky ring. Once per round, you may re-roll all of your dice. Oh my god. <laughs> I also okay. have that and the lucky rabbit's foot. So yeah, I'm like, I'm swimming in good luck right now. So that's all of your turns as well, correct? Yes. Okay. <sighs> A loose, fluttering page covered in barely legible text catches Gloria Goldberg's eye. <laughs> Unable to resist, she reads... Gloria Goldberg suffers two face down horror, lore negates. Alright. Screw your horror! Then she flips one horror face up. Fervor, become righteous, then flip this card face down. Oh, cool. Yeah, fervor. Uh, adversity only stokes the fire of your resolve to make things right again, no matter what. Uh, that's a super awesome horror to have, actually. <laughs> Because I believe being righteous is also a state where it's like, yeah, re-roll a die once per turn, I think. Yeah, I forget what righteous does, but I feel like it's good. Uh, once per round, you may convert a clue icon to a success icon. Nifty. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually doing pretty well right now. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. A roped figure bursts into the entrance hall and yells, oh. There's someone here! You hear a muffled response from another part of the estate. Get rid of them. Spawn a cultist is indicated. The cultist moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator, then attacks the investigator in its face with the lowest strength, but that's me. The cultist weeps and approaches, begging your forgiveness and displaying empty hands. Observation. Okay. I got nothing! Oh, 
Kevin, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to try to stab you, I swear. I will use a clue. Good call. Um, you recognize the ruse and lash out. The monster suffers one damage. Oh, very nice. <laughs> he only has three, so... Yeah. One bash with the fire extinguisher should be enough. Yeah, I, I recall, uh, especially, like, this scenario, but uh, the two-player setups, where it's only two players, the monsters have a lot less health. All right. I will resolve a horror check real quick. Hey, real quick, I just, I just really want to highlight the beauty of the illustration for Righteous. I'll put it up on the screen here so you know what I'm looking at here. But uh, it's, it's just, something about this is just the singular most awesome illustration in the entire game. Because if you recall correctly, it's a nun riding a motorcycle firing a sawed-off shotgun. How can you be more awesome? Oh my god. <laughs> that is amazing. I just, I love it. The cultist calls out to the stars, begging for your demise. Observation of you. Cool. You know, yeah, we're, we're doing really well for this whole game. This is a really good first episode for this to go. Yeah, it's not just us, like, cursing under our breath every time. <laughs> Darn it, I messed up this roll again. I messed up this roll. Ugh. You realize you're in no danger. Discard a horror. Oh, no. I could have used that. Actually, I, I would prefer to keep this face down horror because yeah, it's actually pretty sweet. Well, bad one to have. Yeah. Flip a horror face up. Well, if you say so. <laughs> um, okay. I guess I will go first and finish off this coldest. If that's okay. Sure. Looks like with a heavy weapon. The figure attempts to dart past you and you bring your... Whoa! Man down! Man down! Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, so yeah, the figure attempts to dart past you, and you bring your weapon up in your enemy's way. Observation again. I don't really know how observation is supposed to help me bash somebody's face in. But... Well, if he's, like, running past you, you gotta, like catch him in time before he, like, runs past you? I guess so. Use the clue card. Yep. Um, your foe collides with your welling swing. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test resolve. Which nice. I believe is more than enough to kill him. Uh, so I get my clue back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For when you beat up, uh, cultists. Well, just monsters in general. Mm hmm Uh, so that was one action. Okay. I will check out this thing here. A mysterious painting of a landscape under the night sky overlooks the lavish entryway. Shadowy figures can be seen amidst the landscape. However, something in the stars catches your interest. Lore. Oh dear. Well. Let's spend a clue. Just in case. One wouldn't have been enough. You identify several of the specks of light in the sky as planets. They are all occupying the same section of the sky as if coming into alignment, not unlike the planets in the sky tonight. Beneath the painting, a plaque reads, and memory of Lilith Vanderbilt. Gain two clues and discard the search token. Haha, I guessed right. I was like, do you need two clues? You do need two clues! <laughs> it's almost like we played those before. <laughs> And then I'll move here. Okay. I refuse to come and join you and do what we're supposed to be oh, doing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, all right. <laughs> I'm trying to get, like, as much of the story out as possible, you know? Well, I'm going to go one, two, one action. Uh, three. Tell you what, and for my last action, I will uh, explore that thing. A large scroll showing the solar system is sprawled across the pile of books. The scroll is marked with the orbits of the eight planets. A strange line is drawn out across them from the sun marked with today's date and the words planetary alignment. Gain one clue, then discard the search token. Okie doke. <sighs> um, so that's both of our turns? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
The lights flicker, then die. Place darkness in each space in the lobby. This mythos event affects each investigator in the lobby. Damn it. <laughs> Should have left. <laughs> um, hey, if only you had a light source. Screw you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> the sudden darkness is overwhelming, and you find yourself completely blind. Will? I only need one success. And I'm good. Nice. You force yourself to press on using your memory of the room to navigate. Okie doke. Um, would you like to go first? Sure. I shall go one, two, for one action. One, two, for a second action. Um. Hmm, you think I should just kick down the door and. Alright, yeah, let's do the uh, northern door. <sighs> A weathered door stands at the end of the hall. You hear bizarre noises from the other side. When you try the handle, you find the door is locked. A keyhole sits beneath the brass door handle. You can explore only if you have the brass key unique item. Hey, which guess... you do. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to steal your thunder. There. That's okay. As you open the door to the tall tower, the stairs and walls creak as if exhaling a breath of dusty air. Boxes and other objects are piled against the walls, and a massive circle of runes has been carved into the floor beneath the bell. Discard this explorer token and place the bell tower tentacle tile as indicated. It's a skinny one. Yeah. Stacked above the stairs, you spot something useful. Place the enchanted blade common item Ooh. as indicated. That's a pretty sweet uh, item. Except my For strength. spellcasters, right? Uh, no, you're thinking of the um, ritual, like the ritual dagger, dagger okay. yeah, or the uh, silver twilight dagger. But um, uh, the enchanted blade is pretty sweet for. Um, Actually, my agility is three, and uh, blades. So yeah, blades are usually agility based. Um, two robed figures stand across from each other over the ritual circle, chanting. Uh -huh. The one nearest to you seems to be in some kind of trance and hardly acknowledges your approach. Spawny witch. The other figure lowers the hood of his robe and points at you with an ornate dagger. What are you doing on my property? You are meddling in things you do not understand, and you will die for it. Spawn a priest of Dagon is indicated. This is William Vanderbilt. Hey, Mr. Vanderbilt. William Vanderbilt begins chanting a heinous incantation that causes reality to warp and shift. A single massive creature of terrifying description slips through the fabric of reality and what? into our world. What? Spawn a Shaga is indicated. Oh. He's over here. Um, in the secret library. That thing. Oh, dear Christ. <laughs> okay. The ritual circle on the ground is scattered with candles, skulls, and other trinkets. If you could get these ritual components, you could stop the cold spile magics and have enough proof to condemn the Vanderbilt family. All right. So, break the ritual. Sounds like it. Okay. You may move one space into the explored area. Um... I'm gonna pass on that, actually. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any actions left? Nope. Because uh, I used two actions to get there. Um, I guess I'll look at this last thing and I'll head towards the big dude. Well, the big dude is has gonna is gonna take a while to get to us. That's true. I honestly think that it's going to be more efficient to just um, ride him out. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, what I would do is I I think that we should just bum rush the ritual. So I wouldn't even bother with the thing that you're looking at, to be honest. Well, hold on. You were Should here. I? You yeah. went one, two. Yeah, but I have my two. track shoes. Oh, right! So you can go one, two, three. One, two. Yeah, okay, cool. Ugh. Should I actually, should I pick this up? It's a pretty sweet item. It does three damage. Yeah. But also, I mean, I don't know. I Do feel... you want it since I have the... Yeah, I'll, I'll take that uh, because, again, the Enchanted Blade, the blades are usually agility-based. Yeah. We have the same agility. 
and you've got a pretty high strength. Which is usually what? Pretty much always when you use a heavy weapon, it's strength. Except for those weird times where it was observation for a minute. But well, yeah, but they do that just for a little bit of variety. <laughs> kind of like when you use a firearm and it's like, Will! Huh? Yeah. Um, okay. So, should I attack these guys first, or should I try to evade them and do the ritual thing? Um, I, I think we can take them. Okay. I think we can beat them up. Um, I, I'd start with the witch, because she probably doesn't have a lot of health. The witch only has three. Yeah. So I'll see what I can do about her. Attack with a heavy weapon. You jab your weapon at your foe's stomach. Strength. Wow. Well. I only needed one success and I didn't even get that. Okay. You don't have any lucky items that let you reroll stuff? No. That's just me? <laughs> yeah. You have literally all of them. <laughs> okay. Um, your foe lurches backward out of your reach. Um, unfortunately, I used two actions to get there in my third two attack, so that's right. me. Okay. All right. Well, mythos. <sighs> Dang witch. A spell leaps unbidden into your mind. This mythos event affects the investigator with the lowest will. Um, tell you what, I'll take this because we have the same will, right? We Correct. both have four. Correct. I'll take this, and if it's a and if it's a spell, it's probably lore based. So yeah, I'll take it. You attempt to decipher the spell. Lore. Mm. You only need one success. Oh, all right. Well, fair enough. Oh my god. <laughs> At least you got some clues. Uh, no, I'll I'll use my lucky rabbit's foot first. Okay, and now I'll use um, the lucky ring. Well, because at the end of this mythos phase, it's a ne the next round. That's true. And then I can, yeah. Are you... Just spin it, Cluto. I know, but I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, there you go. There's a clue. Um, you realize casting it would be a terrible idea. Oh, you know what? I didn't need to do that. Because I'm righteous. Once per round, I can convert a clue icon to a success icon. I forgot about all these positive... When I just become overwhelmed with all of these positive buffs... Oh my god. <laughs> it's hard to keep them straight. It must be terrible to be you. <laughs> okay, the witch moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Well, if she moves, she'll be in range of you. How about... We'll let her move to me, okay. and then you can take on the priest. Okay. Then she attacks the investigator within range of a separate the most war. The witch shatters an archaic funerary urn, and in the puff of powdered ash, you see the forms of many dear departed friends. Aww. Flip to horror face up. I'm righteous! <laughs> the, the specters become more and more real, reaching out with hungry arms and tearing at you. Suffer three face down damage, will plus one negates. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she... She got mad that I tried to hit her, so she's not messing around. Oh, anymore. I shouldn't have used these. Yeah, you stupid. Well, I thought... Oh my god. Oh my god. You wasted all of that. What did I even use the thing on? <sighs> Who attacked me? Was it a horror check? I don't even remember. It was a mythos check. Yeah, it was just like a mythos check. Okay, anyway. Uh, will plus one. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, I'll use two clues. Because it's three damage, right? Correct. Yeah, I will negate all of that. Thank you very much. Vanderbilt moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Do we want to just leave him here yeah, with I me? Yeah, th I think he's just going to chill. Uh, then he attacks with each investigator within range. Monster attacks. Vanderbilt mumbles a dark chant. You feel something writhing within your skin. Suffer two face down damage. No rolls? Nope. Yeah. I just take it. Well, I guess you got bandages. Yep. But I honestly don't think we're even going to need them. Mm, no. The Shuggoth moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator within range. Nobody's within oh, range. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, no investigators within range. The Shuggoth moves two spaces toward the bell tower. And then we'll each have to do horror checks. Mm -hmm. Do the witch first. Sure. 
For a moment, you think you understand the source of the witch's strange powers. Suffer two face down horror. Lore plus one negates. Lore plus one? Okay. And if I suffer a horror, I have to discard righteous, so I'd rather not. Aha! It's two, right? Correct. Cool. Okay. Dag on. Vanderbilt's skin seems slick with sweat. Your nose is filled with the smell like rotting fish and blood, and you grow nauseous. Suffer one face down horror and become dazed. Again, I don't even get an opportunity to negate it. It's yeah. just... Here you go! Okay! Do you want to start or should I? I figured we would just, you know, take turns uh, attacking our monster. Tell you what, I'll go first because I feel like the witch is going to be a pushover. Yeah, she only has three damage. Yeah, three hopefully she'll be easy to kill. Okay, my lucky stuff unexhausts. Okay, uh, so I will attack her with um, some spectral razors. So a spell. You trace a mystic sigil in the air, letting your mind expand into it. Lore to successes. Um, righteous. So that's a success. The curse bursts from you. The monster suffers damage equal to the spell's damage. Just two? And then do I flip to the spell? Yes. Uh, Alright, let's see here. Finishing the incantation, you hope that this power will be enough to protect you. No additional effect. Discard, gain another spectral razor. Okay. Well, that could have been worse. <laughs> um. Yeah, let's use the spell again. You struggle to pronounce the blasphemous phrase, arcane words twisting your tongue. Lore to successes. Man. Um, I'll use two clues. Some primordial instinct guides your speech. The monster suffers damage equal to the spell's damage plus your test result. Why couldn't that be the first roll? Yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, she's dead. She's dead. And you I gain a clue. clue. Yeah. Then I guess I'll... Well, I... I'm oh, still... you still have... Yeah, okay, sorry. That's okay. I'm just gonna move into your space. You didn't want to, like, stop and get the dagger? I... Well, I've only got one action left anyway. That's true. And I think you got this. Okay. Oh. Uh, attack with a heavy weapon. You swing your weapon in a circle, momentum carrying it towards your foe. Agility to successes. <laughs> well, you're swimming in clues. Oh, this is true. Your weapon connects, sending your enemy reeling. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test resolve. Nice. So you used all your clues to get all successes? Yes. Nice. So that means he takes five damage. That's pretty heavy. He is one away from being dead. <laughs> I feel like you got this. All right. A blood fury consumes you, and you sm swing madly at your enemy. For the horde! Roll two additional dice if you have suffered three or more damage. Get it? Like bloodlust from Warcraft? But I've only, I've only suffered two, so. Nice. Okay, the monster suffers damage equal to your test result. He is dead. I get a clue. Sweet. Very nice. Here's that. Goodbye, Priest of Dagon. Alright, you want to uh, play around with that ritual? Sure. Ritual component? A ritual circle is carved into the ground and scattered with components. You attempt to retrieve the ritual components, but a malign energy protects them. Disrupt the ritual. Using your gut and scraps of knowledge you have gathered, you attempt to remove the items without triggering the defensive magic. Lore, you may discard any number of evidence to convert an equal number of magnifying glasses to successes. Okay. I have... one. 
Well, I mean, either way, like, I'm pretty sure these are going to be cumulative results. Oh, hey, guess what? What? I was dazed. I shouldn't have been able to use blue tokens. Wah, wah, wah. <sighs> Sorry we cheated, guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been cheating since the beginning, so, you know. <laughs> Ugh, it's so hard to keep track. It kind of is. Yeah, I feel like... Especially um, this late in the game when you got, like, 12 cards. Yeah, I feel like the, um, the effect cards, they need to have some sort of, um... Like, like in-app feature to, no, like, not remind you. No, no, just the cards themselves need to have something, like, a really bright red, like, border or something like that. Because, like, you know, the one card, the one condition card that is the easiest to remember that you have is focused, and that's because the artwork on the card is incredibly bright. Yeah, it's, like, vibrant orange. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it's a positive thing, so you're more likely yeah. to want to remember it. Yeah. Um, Whereas, yeah, Dazed is just, like, a grayish, beige-ish kind of thing, and you're like, meh. Well, I will discard the circumstantial evidence to put two on the board. You remove several items successfully. Wait, but... I thought you had it was only for clue icons you could do that. Okay, whatever. Uh you suffer one phase down damage. You suffer a damage? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Alright. Uh, so then it's a mythos. Correct. A disembodied voice whispers blasphemies into your ear. This mythos event affects the investigator with the highest floor. That'd be me. You do your best to disregard the voice. If you pass... Oh wait, uh, will... And you need two successes. Okay. Uh, the vile notions imposed on your mind only steal your resolve. Cool. Shuggeth moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator within range. Nobody's in range! Shuggeth moves two spaces toward the bell tower. Okay. He's gonna get you. I mean, he's gonna try. And we don't need to do a horror check this round. Yep. Do you want to go first? Yeah, sure, since I've got the most stuff. And you have a higher lore. Mm hmm Yep, using your gun, scraps, and knowledge you have gathered, you attempt to remove the items without triggering the defense of magic. Lore? Lore. Oh, shoot. Alright, I'm going to use the lucky ring to re-roll... Oh, I have to re-roll all of the dice. That's okay, I'll re-roll all dice, because I don't have one success. Feels a little bit better. Um, I'll use Righteous to convert that, uh, and then I'll use the Lucky Rabbit's Foot to re-roll one die. And keep it on the table. But then I threw it on the ground, and then I will use a clue for that. So that would be three successes. Carefully performing each step, you remove the components from the ritual circle. Almost immediately, some of the malign energy seems to fade from the air around you. You have put an end to the cold spiral scheme. Oh, Gain sweet. the ritual components unique item, then discard this interact token. All right. Ritual components. I did use the lucky rabbit's foot. The investigation is complete if an investigator escapes the mansion with the ritual components. Investigators win the game when the investigation is complete. Place an explore token. I'm going to use the trade action to give you the ritual components, and why don't you run on out of here with those track shoes you got? <laughs> Alrighty. Hopper, come on, you're in a really one, inconvenient place. Come on. Two, yes, I know, three, you're very pretty. One, two. mansion's front door is just in front of you. The investigation is complete if an investigator escapes the mansion with the ritual components unique item. Which I have. Well, there you go! You throw open the door and flee into the night, carrying the proof of Vanderbilt's heinous crimes. I got it! I got it! I got it! The investigation is complete. Each investigator wins the game unless an effect such as an insane condition specifies otherwise. Alright! We 
did it. You burst through the front door of the mansion and run for your vehicle, desperately clutching the components from the ritual site, incontrovertible evidence of the cult and proof of their connection to the disappearances. Your vehicle sputters and slides as you accelerate down the uneven drive. If you can make it to the police department alive, the cult will surely be destroyed. You smash through the gates at the end of the drive and careen out into the road, leaving the Vanderbilt estate far behind you. I like how we just left that like ancient elder form <laughs> in the house. No, and, and me. You left me there too. <laughs> you all did right. all of the work. I just traipsed around the maze. Yeah, you were like, hours. I'm gonna mosey about it. Well, there you go, everyone. So we beat. I mean, kind of. I say beat because we cheated on like more than one occasion. <laughs> Uh, for, for one thing, we completely, yeah, we overrode, overridden, overrode, overrided. Anyway, uh, the whole two action per limit, uh, per, per turn thing. I don't know, it just, it makes the game feel a lot more fun, a lot more satisfying if you have a, a free, um, I don't know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try the, playing the game on hard mode in the future, and, uh, you know, like the way that you're supposed to play it. <laughs> maybe in the, uh, huh? <laughs> um... But yeah, we'll probably do some more scenarios just to kind of have fun and all that. So um, uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good game. We actually had really solid luck there, huh? Yeah, we had really good rolls. Yeah. Nobody suffered too much, or. Yeah, and the one horror that I got was the one that was like, you are now a nun with riding a motorcycle with a shotgun. So the best kind that you can get. Mine was a minor shock. Oh well, there you go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we're gonna do some more videos like these in the future, probably at some point. Um, we're probably gonna try to knock out all of the core scenarios that come with, um... The main like, game? Yeah, the core game, uh, before we move on to the expansions and all that. Except for Rising Tide. We are not playing Rising Tide. I don't care what any of you say. Unless you want to give us money. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no. Uh, but even then, I try not to monetize my channel because... It's just not worth it. Hey, free money. <laughs> but it's not worth it. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, let us know in the comments um, what kind of scenario you would like to see us play next. Um, I'm rather partial to um, Escape from Innsmouth. That one's pretty good. And then what's the other one? It's like Shattered Bonds or something like that. What's the, what's the other one that comes with the core game? I don't remember. That one is not as fun. Is, but is that the scenario that I'm thinking of? I don't know what you just... What do you... What happens in the scenario? I don't remember. It was just another one where you, like, explore a sp uh, spooky haunted house. Yeah, I don't think we've ever bonds, actually... Yeah, you're, like, supposed to be kind of escorting a family around the house because there's, like, some weird yeah, monster well, that tries to kill them. Well, I just... I don't remember if that's a core scenario or if it's one of the DLC ones. No, I'm pretty sure it's a core. Okay. Well, anyway, um, yeah, like I said, just let us know, uh, which one you would like to have us play, uh, in the comments below. Otherwise, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this at our own leisure. Um, got anything else to add? I love this game so much. <laughs> yeah, she actually bought, like, the DLC for this game. It's my jam. <laughs> Alright, well, thank you again, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time on, uh, Let's Play Mansions of Madness. Uh, have a good evening. Bye. Bye.